Jason. Welcome to the Nerdstalker Tech Week podcast. I am Adolfo Ferranda on Twitter, and you are... Greg Gloria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. How's you doing, man? This Good. is number 50, huh? Yes, yes, and I just realized I said I'm Adolfo Ferranda on Twitter, and I am not Adolfo Ferranda on Twitter. I am Adolfo Ferranda, <laughs> but I'm A. Ferranda on Twitter, or at Nerdstalker on Twitter. Episode 50, yes, sir. We're halfway to 100 for those yes, not yes. so mathematically inclined. That's right. Well, 50 is an even number. <laughs> yes, sir. So anyway, let's get into what it. What do we got going here? Mozilla's getting uh, agnostic with yes. the safe paper system? Yeah, so <laughs> thank you, uh, Corey Doctor from Boing Boing, for this wonderful information here. Another payment system option. Mozilla Foundation has previewed a new and experimental system for in-app payments. Uh, it's intended to solve m- several major problems with inc- existing payment service uh, systems available for developers, including the fact that other payment systems are strongly partisan, tilted to one or just a few payment processors. It's a good and useful thing and an example of the sort of good that a well-funded nonprofit can do for the health of the web. And I agree. Nice. So what he says is what's wrong with the web is that users cannot choose how to pay. They have to select usually from one or predefined options. In most cases, the user has to type in an actual credit card number on each site, which is not typically very safe to do. Merchants typically have to manage all really? of this or they're on their own. Payment processors set up, costly processing fees, and possibly even PCI compliance there are services to mitigate a lot of these compliances, such as PayPal, Stripe, and others, but they aren't integrated into the web devices very well. Mozilla wants to introduce a common web API to make payments easy and secure on web devices, yet still as flexible as the checkout button for merchants. So for more information, mm-hmm. go to mozilla.org forward slash Kumar McMillan or just, you know, Google it. So this this really moves uh, payment into more of a a, a native web uh, HTML environment, exactly. that kind of thing. Exactly. So no wow. more of this having to jump around to to another page, another service, and and uh, bog you know bogging down the experience of buying something. Make it seamless. Make it easy. Make it native web. Awesome. Well, good yeah. on you, Mozilla. Yeah, Thank you so out. much yeah. for that one. So how yeah. about you, man? Yeah. Google Fiber. Now this is exciting news. Uh, Google uh, Fiber is coming down to. Uh, Austin. So another reason to move to Austin, my friends. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get not only the TV uh, with plenty of bandwidth, you'll get phone and uh, one gigabyte plus uh, wow. uh, broadband services. Isn't that nice? That's killer. So uh, yeah, check it out. We'll have the, the press releases in the Engadget uh, story uh, that we'll give you the link to. But it's, uh, you know, as you know, I work with a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, city, uh, San Francisco city um, uh, agencies right. in my in my uh, re- uh, other gig, and and this t- this is not easy to do actually. You know, if you think about it, uh, people like uh, Comcast or whatever cable network and and AT and T have a lot to say, right? And and they have a lot of a lot of uh, movement there in in the nation's capital or as well as the uh, local capitals around each state. Uh, to try to you know curbs things like this, so yeah, you know, I, and that was really that that was really the death of um, uh, the wireless here in, in San Francisco yeah. was uh, stuff like that. So uh, you know, good on Austin because they they pulled it together somehow, and and, and I'm sure Google uh, sweetened the pot with that one, man. Great news, great news, Austin. major news, major news. All right, well, yeah, next story, so. man. Baidu working on Google Glass like a Baidu Eye. So yeah, Ooh. they did confirm it. It Baidu has Eye. an internal name of uh, Baidu Eye. Sign of the the agency that reported this. Um, Sites knowledgeable but anonymous sources are saying that Baidu Eye is worn like glasses. Uh, features an LCD display can recognize images and control by voice. The features are reportedly already operating properly, but the size and build of the device is apparently still very much in testing. The company is also reportedly mm. working on with Qualcomm on getting a battery life of uh, up to 12 hours or above. Uh, perhaps Ooh. unsurprisingly, the Baidu Eye will also be an application platform that third-party developers will be able to develop apps for. Mm-hmm. More broadly, mm-hmm. Baidu apparently is aiming to create a wearable tech platform that companies could take advantage of uh, to release all sorts of wearable technology products. Sinotech reports speculate that if the device's image recognition, which in, does include facial recognition, works well enough, it could be used to catch wanted criminals or sim- by simply walking around. Uh, very minority report, creepy. Still, wow. wide uh, adoption very. is still a long way away for the device, which hasn't been officially announced yet. Uh, the guess is that commercially available Baidu Eye is still a year or two away if it's ever released at right. all. So we shall see. Well, 
Well, well what do you think about uh, you know things like Google Glass? I mean, they're just following up on this, but uh, do you think that's really the new uh, computer or the future computer, uh, uh, yeah. feature of computing for all of us? Yeah, this is a well, technology that's been out, but not popularly out, uh, if you will. Uh, Google has popularized it, popularized it. Mm. Uh, However, uh, the, I mean, we don't. Even, we haven't seen a mass uh, product uh, availability yet. Right now, it's a very exclusive fifteen hundred dollars or something devices right now that uh, aren't even for sale retail yet. So I think it's to be seen if the if the consumer will accept this or not. You know, or if you'll just yeah. look too goofy on the street wearing these things, or will you be a target for crime? Who knows. A target for crime, yeah. yeah. So they won't be swapping. They won't be stealing your smartphone, but they'll be stealing your glasses. Stealing right? your glasses, so, yeah. Snatch your yeah, thousand dollars a pop. Yeah, it's pretty expensive, right? It's a nice right. No, what, what was the cost of what's the cost of these Google glasses these days? I think it's fi around fifteen hundred bucks. Just uh, yeah, just to stand oh, in line okay. and get a reservation. Like wow. Okay. Well, let's move on. Ario. Uh, Gosh, you know, this is an interesting one. I, I caught it off of, uh, I, I monitor an advertising channel on my um, Feedly network because yeah. Google Reader is gone, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> oh, going away. But anyway, uh, thanks to Janine uh, Pogi uh, of AdAge for this. Uh, so, uh, Aereo uh, and, and Fox is in this battle. So let, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. So um, uh, what... What what they're saying is that if 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 Aereo, which which if you don't know Aereo, if you go to their website www.aereo.com, they're pretty upfront that in the in their tagline you'll know exactly what they do. It says watch real live TV on the internet. Finally, uh, with Aereo, you can now watch live broadcast television online, no cable required. Now, you know they're they're hitting everyone in the mouth with that with that statement, right? So so if Fox isn't lying down, you know they're suing each other. And uh, what what's at stake here is that if Aereo, basically what Aereo is doing is they take. Um, Anything that's transmitted on the public, what they call airwaves, you know, digital airwaves, you want to call it, and rebroadcast it. And um, the the issue is, is Fox saying, well, wait a minute, you know, we, you know, if you rebroadcast for commercial intent, which I think Aereo is doing it for, yeah. um, they're saying, cool. hey, you can't, that's illegal, you're breaking all the copyrights, right. you know. Right get off and so they're saying that you know and, and i think it's just a threat an idle threat the ceo at uh, nab this week uh, which just started this week and just started actually today it's monday right. um said uh, uh chase carey the ceo of news corp the parent company of fox said that you know if aereo fails we might consider turning fox into a subscription service hmm. and then I hear the laughter in the background, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not going to do that. Uh, they won't do that. But but I think it's just something that says, you know, this is serious enough. You, everyone should pay attention. I think that's what he's really trying to do with this one. Yeah. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, another Google story. Yeah. Huh? Uh, well, Google-like story. Yeah. Uh, what's this? They're, yeah, They're going to buy WhatsApp? Yeah. So oh, Google wow. reported plans, uh, report, reported plan to buy WhatsApp. For a billion dollars would really tick off Facebook, thanks to Tara Kutinen for this story. Uh, Google and WhatsApp have reportedly been locked in negotiations uh, about an acquisition for more than a month, and WhatsApp is pushing for nearly a $1 billion valuation. Digital Trends recently reported that number sounds huge, but even though WhatsApp has not released its user base estimate, it's widely assumed to be more than $300 million. Uh, very yeah, interesting thing is WhatsApp has become massively popular service on all continents, but it is particularly big in Europe and Latin America, where its market penetration among smartphone users tops 80% in countries including Brazil, Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, and Germany. Um, however, there's, uh, this is one recent trend that explains why WhatsApp might be considering selling out right now. Several rival messaging services have managed yeah. to gain apparent locks in major Asian markets, such as China, WeChat service, Korea, KakaoTalk, yes. and Japan yes. has Line. Uh, attempting to challenge any of these giants could require really deep pockets and major investment in areas like social gaming and location-based services. Um, as mighty as WhatsApp might seem in Europe, Latin America, and the United States, there's a small chance that the Asian challengers could leverage their gaming expertise to undermine it in uh, coming years. Uh, so, you know, a big challenge for them. Uh, the, WhatsApp is really known for their independence, and, and they were said to never sell out and this and that. 
But uh, it's really interesting how uh, Asian markets are dictating so much of this business now. Also, it's it would be yeah. a feather in either Facebook or Google's uh, cap right now since neither of them have a particularly huge messaging uh, solution. I think Facebook probably has the edge. Uh, Google has been sort of mired in creating and refining Gmail to take on uh, pretty much snuff out Hotmail, which is, you know, Hotmail. And... Um, Right. And, and then also another an interesting um, uh, angle on this is the acquisition would definitely give Apple some food for thought. The closed messages, messaging system on the iPhone and iPad already runs the risk of being left behind due to its proprietary nature. So, nice. dude, hospital Makes uses sense. iPads to help moms stay in contact with newborns. This sounds awesome. Yeah, no, it is. Um, thanks to uh, Yoni Heisler from the unofficial Apple web blog, T-A-U-W, they call it. Mm -hmm. So, um uh, as you know, uh, nerd stalker and health, uh, you're really into that uh, these days. So um, a program called Baby Time at Cedar sinai Medical Center, a famous hospital in uh, Los Angeles, California, uh, recently deployed iPads to its neonatal intensive care unit at the ICU to enable mothers to see their newborns and interact with the hospital staff when they can't do so in person. Very cool. And a as you know, um, yeah, as you know, uh, or maybe you don't know, um, as babies go into ICU, the mother and the baby are separated uh, for an indeterminate amount of time until the baby becomes stable, right? Right. Um, so the ability for the mother to interact with the baby, uh, you know, kind of deals with this kind of, uh, you know, post-mortem, uh, you know, uh, you know, depression they go through and just it's just a stressful time for all everyone concerned right mm -hmm. so the ability to talk to the staff talk to the baby uh you know at least try to interact with uh with him or her um through an ipad is just a cool use of technology yeah. it's, it's simple right yeah real simple cool, i mean yeah, we're not talking about you know we're not talking about rocket science here, yeah. right? It's it's there already. Good so sign, Greg. you know, good on Cedar Side. Yeah, good on Cedar Side. I mean, you know, it's 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 the way to go, and and the facility communication with technology, you know, brings these darn hospitals out of the Stone Age, you know. So yeah, man. <laughs> you know, keep on going, Cedar Side. <laughs> we're watching you on Nerd Stalker. That's right. Anyway, speed round. That's right. Well, yeah, speed round. Let's go. Speed Let's round. go, man. Yeah, so why mounting your TV above the fireplace is never a good idea. So uh, thanks, Lifehacker, what? for this one. And this goes out to my friend Trishan over at the Startup Medium. Uh, I recently went through this experience with him. So, yeah, so uh, first and foremost, the heat and soot generated by a fireplace can raise the operating temperature of the set and reduce its usable lifespan. If the damage to the internals is noticeable, the manufacturer could even refuse warranty service. Oh, uh, this won't really matter oh, if you man. rarely use your fireplace, but it's a non-starter if you do. Also, it's a pain in the okay. neck. Uh, you know, you just place too high. Actually, the optimum level should be 15 degrees above your horizontal plane of vision and never more. Additionally, it's been shown that LCD and L LED backlit sets suffer uh, from poor viewing angles. So you want this guy just right. Otherwise, you degrade your view. Uh, so eye level okay, above, well, people. There you go. Well, all you, all you architects designing houses, you better think about this. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> right now, there's millions of people across the U.S. Yeah. taking their TVs down. <laughs> taking the TV down or ripping out their right. fire. Places. I love this anyway. next story. Speed round. <laughs> All I see are lasers. Is the word laser? Tell us more. Oh, I love lasers. Anyway, thanks to uh, Eric Clymer of Gizmodo for this. Um, so, sounding, you know, there's there was this cool video that they discovered. Um, so basically, they caught the Navy using a laser gun to blast a drone right out of the sky. So, hey, future future. Uh, warfare, you know, is drones. You know, you see them all over the place. But now, what about lasers? So, um, they, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. We're talking about kind of like uh, Star Wars like things here, right? So, they just blast this drone time. out of the, you know, out of the air. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, the Navy, I, you know, I would have guessed, I would have thought maybe the Air Force would have bought someone else, but the Navy, I don't know, whatever. Hmm. But um, anyway, the Navy has been testing its boringly named Lasers Weapon System, LAWS. Hmm. You know, come on, guys. Yeah. Let's, let's come up with better names than that, please. Anyway, um, you know, they, uh, they, uh, they, they blasted a drone, and, and get, get this, we're going to the world of ROI now, because now a laser shot they're claiming could be as little as $1 as, as opposed to an inter a continental ballistic missile. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Austerity um, times, yes. Yes, yeah, indeed. Here you know, we are. The laser. Lasers, yeah, lasers come to your ship. 
soon, All as right. they call it. Anyway. So, Greg, why don't we Move go into on. your HP story, and then we'll go into and tell my story after that. Okay, sounds good. So anyway, yeah, sounds HP. good. Um, so H- HP, hey, wow. Um, hey, um, I think uh, server technology just got cheaper, my friends, and, and less expensive due to energy costs. So uh, thanks to Dylan uh, Tweeney of VentureBeat for this. Uh, they have a new server project called Moonshot. Uh, so uh, today, HP announced that customers can now buy a, a, an HP Moonshot services. So why is this significant? Well, it's significant because one, in one rack space, you get basically 1,800 servers, wow. which will support about 3 million visitors a day. And only cost you 720 watts wow. of energy. Now, you know, good on that. Yeah, so amazing. how did they get there? Well, how did they get there? Well, they're using um, Intel's, uh, uh, you know, low-power S1200 microprocessor system on a chip system, which really draws about 6 to 10 watts per chip. Yeah. And... Um, you know, they've packed a lot of power in there. So scalability, my friends, is now available on a rack system from HP. Isn't that neat? Yeah, this is great news for everyone. Great news for uh, enterprises. Great news for large, obviously, uh, server provider, you know, space providers kind of things. Gonna... Data centers. Yeah, this yeah. is good for the planet because large, smaller carbon footprint and smaller space size needed for the whole thing. So this is, uh, you know. Yes. This is Thank great you. news. Thank you, HP. Yes. Okay, let's go on to your next one. Speed round. Speed, Speed round. round. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, this one is just to say goodbye to an old friend uh, who passed away, Alan Stern. Uh, who's hmm. Alan Stern, who co-founded uh, the tech blog Center Networks and Startup Cloud Context, died last week, according to a message posted yesterday to his Facebook page by his sister, Sorry Rosenberger. Stern uh, began working on the Internet in 95 in the early days of the web, mm. serving as editor of centernetworks.com, a blog focusing on startups and entre- entrepreneurialism. In 2008, he founded Cloud Contacts, a business card processor that organized the uh, stacks of business cards people collect every day. Uh, with the goal, goal of improving his health, Stern moved from New York to Austin, Texas, and started a company called Let's Talk Fitness, which promoted healthy living mm-hmm. with weight loss tips and recipes for fruit and vegetable smoothies. He had quite a few subscribers and uh, a lot of people that were very enthusiastic of that. Stern had... Um, uh, you know, he was when when we met in 2008. He assembled pretty much a bunch of strangers, put a tweet. Uh, it was kind of a tweet up kind of thing back in the early days, type of thing. Oh, nice! Uh, at a tech nice. event, saying, "Hey, let's just all get together for dinner." And people just showed up, and he was just a uh, very charismatic, very welcoming. Made everyone feel at ease. I really appreciated his demeanor and his interest in, mm-hmm. in technology as well. Really good guy. Uh, it's a loss for the uh, tech industry for sure. And so, thank you, Alan, for all your your work and. Uh, and for all the your your great legacy left behind. Uh, anyway, let's go into the tip time. Tip time. Yeah, uh, tip time. So, what's this about? Uh, podcast uh, gallery. Yeah, podcast gallery. Your favorite shows to Dropbox and Google Drive. So, thanks to Thorin Kozlowski of the Life Hacker for this one. Managing saving your podcast is already pretty simple, but Podcast Gallery is doing it in a unique, really cool way. It's a web app that makes it even easier and allows you to save your favorite episodes directly to Google Drive or Dropbox. How cool is that? On the surface, Podcast Gallery is already a great directory of podcasts that, that's easy to browse. You can sign in with Twitter or Facebook and create collections of your favorite podcasts to use it as an online podcast manager. From there, you can listen or watch mm. your podcast directly in your browser without any additional downloads. If you have a podcast episode you like, you can save it to your Google Drive or Dropbox account so it's accessible any, wow. anywhere. Wow. Podcast Gallery doesn't... Wow have every single podcast out there uh, but it does have the most popular ones for now once you build up your collection you can share it with your friends uh, with the url or download the opml file and import it into your into other podcast managers so well done you know give nice. worth worth a check out and hopefully we'll add nerd stalker to that list eventually soon uh podcast gallery and greg your tip nice nice well, uh, you, you like social good apps? Well, yes, we have sir. one. Uh, they were they presented at uh, SF New Tech last month on the twentieth, um, cool. and uh, and and it's uh, Jeff Kirshner's uh, uh, social web app called uh, Literati. Literati. <laughs> Pretty cool name, actually. Yeah, but, yeah. We did an interview just recently at Jeff, and I thought um, you know give it a give it a listen when you guys have a chance. We'll have the link on the on the website for that, but uh, or just go to the website for that. But uh, really really nice app. Uh, uh, basically. Uh, uh, it, you you take your 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 uh, smartphone camera, uh, use Instagram, take a picture of it, tag it Literati, tag it maybe with the brand that it was, whether it was McDonald's or or Starbucks or whatever have you, and uh, just basically post it. And it goes into what they call the digital landfill. So. Um, 
the interesting thing when I interviewed Jeff was is that he discovered that this data that he's getting with these brands through Instagram um, is valuable. Hmm. You know, he can now approach, uh, you know, he could work with brands to kind of do, do positive messaging, saying that, like, for example, you know, if you pick up uh, five pieces of trash in a given area uh, with our brand, you know, we'll give you a coupon cool. for a free uh, coffee or, you know, or something cool. like that. And uh, and he has the Incentive. ability now there with, you, you know, yeah. And 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 all the uh, most of these pictures these days, he said, are being geotagged uh, through Instagram. So hmm. he could actually place the uh, the brand garbage, if you want to call it, and a heat map on a map, and you could actually see exactly how close to a store that some of these things are. And you know, you could really uh, make some impact. You could have some games with it. Uh, you could maybe have some kind of uh, uh, you know contest between classes at schools. Cool. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things yeah. you could do. So anyway, cool. good on you, Jeff. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, uh, uh, gi- Yeah, giving you a shout. So yeah, thank you. That was, that's my tip of the week. Thank you. And events so, coming up, Greg. We got SF New Tech on tour and in house, don't we? All over the place. Yes. Well, uh, this week uh, or this next week, uh, we got uh, Belly Up. Uh, I guess have new tech. It's basically their mixer where uh, the first hundred hundred beers are on them. It's just a mixing event uh, at 46 Mina. Um, and he wants you to, uh, Miles uh, Weisletter wants you to come out and just join him and just uh, mix with a bunch of great uh, SF New Tech people. And then we have the S- actually SF New Tech um, uh, meetup uh, at, on 424 at Mighty, uh, 119 Utah Street, San Francisco, California. And, uh, and I think uh, they'll be announcing who will be pitching there soon. But the biggest cool. announcement came from Miles in this last week was really the new tech tour. Yeah. And their stalkers going, man. Woo-hoo, their stalkers go going. So, um, I'm going along with them. Nice. So uh, you'll get updates from me on the Nerd Soccer channel. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go. It's a three-city tour, uh, starting with San Diego, uh, moving on to lovely Salt Lake City, and then ending in the city of sin, Las Vegas, yes. Nevada. So, so, so anyway, we're uh, we're excited uh, as their media sponsor, Nerd Soccer, to join them, yes. and I'm excited personally to be with Miles and help him along with his uh, inaugural event. Yeah. And and you know we had to give. Shout to Microsoft Outwork because they're they're also going to be yeah, along with thanks, us uh, for the ride. Yes, thank you very much. And yeah, so and I think we have a couple announcements coming up in the next month uh, where Nerd Soccer is going to be at some uh, key events in the next couple right, months. So right. uh, stay tuned for that, right? Yeah. So stay also, if you that. guys want to, you know, watch more of the show or get or get it easy, why don't you just go to iTunes and sign up for our audio or video? Uh, podcast or you can go to nerdstalker.com and just get the stuff right from the site as well or you can go to youtube if you want and search for nerdstalker tv you see all our stuff right there and subscribe there as well or we've got all kinds of stuff 24 uh, 7 channel at uh, ibroadcast tv and on stitcher too and all your other podcast aggregators uh, look out for us uh, you can contact me adolfo at nerdstalker.com you can find me on twitter at nerdstalker or at a Ferranda. and greg how about you how do we contact you well, you can contact me on email. Always uh, willing to answer an email from any of our listeners or fans. Uh, at socialgreg at nerdstalker.com. Or you catch me on Twitter at socialgreg. I'm always willing to uh, interact with you there. So anyway, great show, yeah, man. I appreciate uh, did it. getting back on the horse again. That's right. 50 after Easter. <laughs> We're ready to rock for another 50, man. That's great. Ready to rock for another 50. Well, thanks, everyone, yeah, for watching great. and listening. We pr- really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for watching and listening, and be careful out there. Thank you. Okay.